evening everybody thanks the osr team for uh, inviting me to have a lecture this uh, evening and for making this event possible so this evening uh, i'm going to talk a little bit about a strategic concept called sabaki you probably heard about this uh, term before or the concept itself it's uh, the, the translation for from Japanese uh, would be that the meaning of sabaki is development. And it's actually a concept that consists in making a light, flexible shape inside your opponent's sphere of influence or simply uh, trying to, to settle a group as quickly as possible and trying to make a resilient shape. So it's basically a, a technique of handling weak stones as light as possible and many times this kind of uh, sabaki technique it's used to invade or to reduce one of uh, your opponent's moyos so i'm going to show you the the most common patterns uh, where you can use sabaki in actual games and probably the the position you see on the screen uh, it appears quite often both in amateurs and professional games so you're kind of used to it. So when you see uh, a shimari like this, a corner enclosure with uh, two extensions on, on both sides, it's quite dangerous or risky to invade all the way to, to the side. So it's more interesting to play a move like one and try to reduce and, and try to uh, threaten the position as, as light as possible. So usually here when you play a move like one to reduce black can react with uh, a k mod a like this to to keep the right side or a kosumi at b if he's, if he's interested in uh, defending the top side so for the sake of example if uh, black simply plays k mod here white will try to to set up a, a shape in the top so this happens most of the time it's like a a classic follow-up and now crosscut it's, it's used a lot to to make the sabaki possible and in this case if black is interested in the territory in the top right corner he will probably just simply take the stone and then white just wants to use the the sacrifice here to to get more outside forcing moves in order to fix the shape and now in this position you probably wonder which is the best move for white to, to continue and get a light shape. And what what would be your guess? Can you hear me fine? By the way. Next move is key uh, to, to set up the sabaki. So usually here, uh, white simply plays something like this jump. Even that there's a problem with the cutting point at N17. Oh, great. Thank you. If white plays something like this or like this, this will end up in a heavy position. So if this hanging pro uh, connection happens, uh, black simply peeps and white has to connect and black extends. So this way, white's position is not that successful. Yeah, that's correct. And if this happens, black's next move is pretty ideal to start attacking. It's the, the famous ice stealing to Suji. Mm -hmm. Bucket, it's right, yeah. We're talking about light shapes, that's true. So this way, again, uh, white's group, it's uh, a little bit heavy and under attack. And you don't want that. You want to get a light, flexible shape and get out of trouble as much as, uh, as fast as possible. So with this kind of move, uh, white is trying to get uh, uh, So now it black cuts here. White can cover and sacrifice more stones here. And then when he extends, in the end, uh, he managed to, to set up a sabaki. Because like this, K16, it's isolated. And Black invested too many stones in that top right corner to, 
to secure some territory. So I think White is pretty satisfied with this. Now let me set up a different position here real quick. Let's say we have the Shimari this way and the extension like this. So if White, White wants to, to invade the top right corner and uh, fix the shape quickly, he can start with the probe at R17. This is actually another concept called Yozumiru. And usually Black will play it very, will just uh, defend strongly. And then Hane sacrifice the corner and jump out. So this is again a sabaki for white because he played a few moves in the top right corner and he just fixed the base very quickly and he can get away. Now let's move to the next example. So in this position, it's Black's turn and he just cut like this. Now he's threatening to kill the, the four white stones because he can just play Atari and capture. So what would be a be the best way for white to, to save the four stones and also try to keep those uh, Q17 stones in the corner safe? Try to guess the next move. And in this position, actually, White can think a little bit of uh, using the IG of R14 cut. Any ideas? So if uh, White simply jumps like this to, to capture the black stone in the net, and save those four stones. I think black will start attacking the corner. And here, when white wants to leave in the top right corner, and he goes Atari like this, in order to save the top, he needs to add more moves, like this one, or this one, but then he will lose the four stones in the middle. If this happens, and he leaves in the corner, the four stones will die. And this is also quite terrible. Because now he loses the corner and uh, black can still capture a uh, cut at A. Oops. I mean here. So there's a clever way for uh, white to, to try to refute that and keep the corner safe, but also be able to, to keep those uh, four stones alive. So he can start from Atari. Now this is pretty much forced because Black has to answer. And next move, it's key. He can go Atari on the, the second line. Here, if Black comes out, and many Q players can uh, probably play this by, I don't know, playing too fast or by reflex, White will capture everything. So black is forced to take the stone. Then white will attack in center. Black has to connect. And now white has time to defend both the corner and the, the four stones. So if Sagari and uh, black is trying to kill the corner, what's the vital point to, to keep the twice here? Already the four stones are safe in the middle. So now you just need one move to, to stay alive. Which is a 2-2 two -two point. That's correct. And if Black plays the, the Nobi to, to threaten the four stones, then this bamboo will uh, keep the four stones connected. And the corner is still alive. So we can say white managed a successful sabaki in this case to, to rescue the corner and also keep those four stones alive using the, the force he moves first. So sometimes you gotta use sabaki in, in close fights, not only in, uh, 
some situations where you want to destroy a Moyo or invade and go out. Now in this position, which uh, it's a Fuseki pattern, mm, it's Black's turn, and he should find a move to to prevent White Sabaki from R14. What would be the options? In this particular case, the idea is to to prevent white sabaki. Because normally you just feel like playing a pincer, something like R11, R10. Yeah, usually you kick. That's correct. And then when white goes out, you take away the extension. It can be Q11, R11. Yeah, if this happens, you don't allow white to extend ideal at uh, A or B. If a kick happens and it's white's turn, let's say black plays somewhere else, he's always happy to extend here. So sometimes people just uh, get uh, a bit too excited about the extension on the side, the pincer. So they just play R11 or R10. And now white can uh, fix the cornerstone and set up a sabaki. What are the options? Simply running out, it's a bit uh, too, too simple. And probably going in the corner, R17, which is uh, the first thing that comes to mind. It's maybe too nice for black in this case. Because he will set up a huge moy on the right side. So white has to find a better way to to fix his uh, R14. Well, you can try to guess as much as you can. Yeah, that's the common move. And then honey under. If black simply connects here, white makes eye shape real quick, and that's a sabaki. Many times here, black will just atari and connect, and then white can choose between taking a stone in the corner and live like this, which is quite nice for him. From territory point of view, this is okay for white. Or he can decide to connect under <clears throat> and keep his uh, R14 safe. And then either play S13 and leave or go out like this. And this is pretty much a Joseki. We see this Joseki played a lot when uh, 016, it's 017. But this way it works though. Oops. So yeah, it's very good to play the kick and then take away the base. Now, white it's a little bit heavy. And running. How would you make Sabaki next from this shape? I mean, for these three stones. Try to set up a little base. <clears throat> it's still possible. You can try another shot, go Dave. Yeah, the attach is good. And against Hane. Cross cut, right? Yeah, same thing like uh, in the first example. And now if black takes, you play another Atari. And then you can attach here. So white shape, it's quite resilient. And if black just connects here, then you play another Atari, 
and that also gives you some nice eye shape. And now probably you can just invade the corner. Because it is difficult for black to attack uh, the Q, Q11 group anymore. Even if he plays like this with fighting speed and let's white uh, leave in the corner. Now it's, it's hard to compensate on the outside because when black cuts here, white will simply sacrifice and run out again. Well, in general, you want to have um, a light shape that cannot be attacked too, too severe after you tenuki. So you play a few moves and you fix it, more or less. Well, the pen here for, for white was to, to fix those two stones. So with this cap, he's trying to run out and put pressure on R11. But once he played the attach and uh, cross cut like this, you don't feel like playing another move here just to make eyes. You want to be able to take center yeah, and play somewhere else. And then even if black attacks like this, you're still fine. Well, it's, it's still more severe to play R R15 as black. This is a, a basic tactic to to kick because when white goes up, uh, it's pretty heavy and then take away the extension. But if you take the extension low, white can still play the cap and try to to fix a, a shape more or less. When you play R11, that allows a bucky right away like this. So we, with pincer right away, actually white has a, an easier way to to fix that stone. Uh, well, depends. Well, now white has the the choice to to jump into the corner or to attach. But if he wants to hold to this R14 stone, he will attach R, R16. And then Hane and try to to make the Sabaki on the side. Fix the base quickly. But it, it's quite sensitive after all. Huh? So either way, White will manage to, to do something with that stone. But I still believe if you play R15 as black, Especially when uh, O16 is in place, when uh, white goes up here, after you pincer like this or like this, white is still a little bit more heavy, so it's tougher for him to go out. So I guess we can move to the next position. And this is, oh, I have to go a little bit into the game. It's a position taken from a, a top amateur game. And now here comes the, the problem for white. So he played Q3. And you have to think that uh, when black has a stone at R10, he's quite strong on the right side. So he doesn't have to extend again. Which means when uh, white simply makes eye shape here, Black is not going to, to play another stone on the right side. In in the normal Joseki, Black will usually f finish the the sequence with something like R8 or R9, but he already has R10. So if I simply make side shape at P2, Black will immediately attack, hitting the vital point at O3. And now White will be on the run. So when White has to, to run out like this, that's a nice Tsuji to to try to go out and put pressure on the right side. But black is uh, aware of the AG. So if this happens, white simply has a heavy group running towards the middle and uh, black is happy to build the right side and also increase the bottom oil. 
Therefore, in this position, White has to adapt his play a little bit. And that's a good quality of strong players to to manage the positions according to the to the given situation. And here White has to find a better move to to try to fix his Q3. What would you try in this case? Even that P2, it's pretty much the, the reflex move. It's like you're playing here, you expect your opponent to defend on the right, and then you just extend again. This would be pretty much wishful thinking. So you need to try a better way. And there are like two options to, to consider. Yeah, entry, it's, it's an option. Because when you play entry, uh, if black just blocks, you extend again. So you treat these stones very lightly and you try to develop as fast as possible. That's good. And there's another way to play a little more tight, which is O3. So when white plays O3, black has two options. One is to, to block the corner again, because this way he's very solid in this area and he keeps the pressure on white's eye shape, but white will simply jump again. So the base is safe now. Even if black captures a stone like this, white doesn't have to, to worry about eyes anymore. The thing with entry here, it's when you play entry and black blocks like this and you jump again, black can still try to attack the base this way. But this happens sometimes when black doesn't have a, a very strong ponuki here. So then you can just extend with white at entry and K3 and you're fine. But in this case, it's probably better to be a little more tight and go O3 and then extend L3 and stay a little bit away from thickness because G3, it's a pretty strong group. Anyway, it's good to remember that the switch at P2. And if black attacks from this side, white will simply fix size in the corner. This group, it's impossible to kill now. And because white is very strong here, black needs to add another stone. So this would be a successful sabaki for white. He either lives in the corner like that, or he jumps towards the side at L3, and he makes a, a very solid shape in a few moves. So let's check some other positions. Ah, this game it's quite often seen nowadays, but it used to be played in the, in the past as well. I mean, when white approaches with the low Kakari, uh, black answers Kema instead of D15 Kosumi. This used to be more popular in the past, but nowadays, since everybody tries to mimic AlphaGo and the other AIs, Kema, it's uh, more often played. So let's say black plays a, a pincer here, and white tries to, to do something with E17. And there's an interesting move to, to consider here, if you don't want to play directly in the corner or run out with the stone. Actually, there are, there are several variations. Ah, interesting. Just Kosumi Tsuki like this. And what to do when uh, black uh, descends. It's a possible way to run out, but it will end up a little bit heavy. Well, if you play C12, then maybe you don't have time to, to attach because it is black's turn now. So black will probably kick. And when you know B, he can surround everything. It's a little different when the the pincer it's a, it's a G17, so it's tighter. The thing is, if you try to go out with a move like Kosumi, for example, uh, it's not so great. Wait a second. So, I think the file is messed up a little bit here. Uh, okay, wait, wait, wait. K17. Hmm. 
Black will just play here, huh? And it doesn't work. So let me see if I'm on the right path here. So the attach is an option. This is what we were thinking about. Well, play, playing D16, it's not so great because if you want to cut right away, it doesn't really work now. Now white has two problems. These two stones are in danger and the top two stones. So it's probably going to be messy and white will lose some of the, the groups there. So how to react to this attach in the corner? The most natural way. You don't have too many options as black. Actually, it's pretty much just one. That's right, yeah. Just Hane. Now, against this Hane, uh, White can think about a few moves, like counter Hane, block D16, or cross cut. So let's check them one by one. When this move happens, Black can think about playing Atari C18 with Fighting Spirit. <laughs> You're a fake tree done now? Instead of eight or nine. So uh, if black resists here with Atari and white counter Ataris, this can happen. And in some positions, <laughs> I will fake this down since I, I keep losing to these strong bots on uh, cages, but I'll be back. I think if this happens, white is not very happy because he's losing the stone. Oops. And he's still pretty heavy with the group on the outside. So, <laughs> yeah. You still remember that movie? Terminator 2? Okay, how it was. Dun, dun, dun. Crosscut. <laughs> yeah. If white plays a crosscut, he's able to, to fix a nice shape here. Because he gets two forcing moves, one here, one in the corner. And now that's the sabaki he's looking for. Well, if uh, black takes right away, then he's happy to play another Atari and then attach like this. This is a nice strategy to go out because if uh, white cuts, this move is a little bit forcing and now he can counter pincer in the top. So all of a sudden, this G17 becomes quick. Oh. This we've seen already. So now, if white simply hunt in the corner, well, crosscut and, and double honey are pretty much the tacti tactics you want to use when you go for sabaki. And here, uh, black and Atari like this. And white will take the life in the corner right away, which is good enough. Or, oops, back to this. Uh, black can resist with Atari this way. Yeah, if, I, I think if you extend, you will uh, just get uh, a little heavy. But anyway, uh, black can try to, to cut and make white very heavy. And, and this is pretty much like the, the strongest resistance for black, C18, and then capture the cornerstone. But in this position, white has several ways to, to use the edge of that B18 and to lean on uh, G, G17. So the next move, it's, it's quite important for this follow-up. This attach. So now he's actually preparing Miai between taking the stone here or Atari and capture the other stone. So if black responds like this, white will pull back and then either take B16 or H17 cut.
Yeah. Yeah, you want to get out from that corner, otherwise you die and you have to resign pretty soon. So if this happens, white is actually happy with the result. And if white, oops, I clicked the wrong variations on and on. Sorry for that. So um, if black simply plays here, white honey. And again, this is a sabaki. Yeah, sometimes you extend B19, but because you want to kill that corner. But the timing is delicate because if you extend B19 now, black will just play here and let you take one stone. And then he can still attack your group with this move. You don't really have two eyes, it's just one. So you don't always have time to descend. You got to pay attention when you play the, the Sagari. Because, of course, if you descend, uh, you might kill everything. So, but in, in this case, it's also questionable. Because if this happens, and then you go Atari, and you try to kill, he can still link under. So the descend in this position doesn't really work. But in other cases, you descend and you, you go for the kill. That's why many times Black will play the Atari from the other side. Like this. Because even if you go down, let's say this works, and now Black has to live in the corner, so he will push and turn. But it's really situational. Anyway, it's a good detail. Nice spot it, Dave. Oops. I think I, I went a little bit further. Am I ahead of myself here? Let me see. Okay. Probably I messed up the file a little bit. <clears throat> but yeah. All ah, right, these were the suggestions before. Now to this position. Black has a stone at R8, and if he simply runs out, he's probably not very happy because this will happen. And he's simply floating. So the three stones are still under attack. And even that he managed to escape what he's building while chasing, which is always ideal. And it looks very nice for white to, to take the, the P10 spot and build a rot on the right side. And now keep chasing the group like this. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels like Black is throwing the game. Yeah, f f I meant floating. Those three stones are floating. But well, it's not throwing the game because you don't know if black was really that much ahead to. So uh, in this position, what you want to do is to be able to use that R8 more efficiently and break more of the, the right side in the process. So instead of running out, there's a better move. Can you guess? Or at least try? Mm. R6, it's a bold move. Huh? Usually when you play a move like R6, it just allows Y to, to block with a tiger mount, which is an ideal shape. And you don't want your opponent to have nice shapes. And then when you go out, he can also Atari. And you don't feel like connecting because you, you make the soldier's uh, head shape, which is heavy. And when you play this move, you got to fight a core. So it's kind of heavy in the end. R5 is possible here. But so something like this will happen if R5. What you do against these people? Uh, go down or connect solid. The problem here is the same like before. In the end, you gotta jump out 
and white will just build the bottom and the right side while attacking the the heavy group and it looks a bit heavy for for black so black can think about this 2k it's a nice contact play to to make it a little more flexible so now usually to a contact move uh white will no be up or no be down or hane or the other hane so we can check each variation how it will turn out this move seems to to keep things simple as black is separated and now you just wanna honey like this and how to connect next two options here s11 or s12 what would you do in this particular case yeah exactly right that's the move because with s12 you're thinking to go r15 next if just s11 that's still a little bit heavy and quite far from the action so like this black it's uh, a little bit low but when playing s12 then it's nice to jump like this and push so in the end black manage quite nice that uh, right side and R8, even if it feels lost for the moment, it still keeps some RG in the uh, lower right area. So th this is a flexible way to to damage the moyo. Now let's see what happens if white goes Hane up to, to put more pressure and to resist. Which would be the next move? Counter Hane. And here, white can think about cutting or just Atari. If white cuts like this, you gotta go out. Ponuki, it's too much to give here. And now, Atari. So, sacrifice that S10 stone. Uh, R5, R4. Oh. Actually, that's possible too. We can get back to this in a moment. So in this position, you sacrifice uh, S10, and then you want to use the drive to Suji and fix a shape for R11, R12. So what happens here, it's setting up this kind of sacrifice to go out, and then simply connect. And now Black is happy that he's out and he managed to weaken those two corner stones so even if these uh, stones will probably die eventually black is out well they are still algae the the q10 at least but black is out and he can threaten the top right corner so this is a, a flexible way to to go for a trade now what if white plays the sagari which means descent Black and honey. And here white can think about count honey like this or cut. So if it's simply honey, then another trade will happen. How can you capture the stone in a net? There are two ways here. P8 or something else. Or P7, yeah. That's a good move here because you're making a nice shape, you capture that stone, and it's much better than simply jumping out and floating. And you're still leaning a little bit towards the, the bottom moyo to, to try to reduce it. So it's a dual purpose move. And what was the other option? Um, ah, this cut. If this cut happens, uh, when black takes away a liberty here, 
white is forced to go out and luckily black has a, a ladder so now he's giving away r8 but he's capturing q12 which is good so again the top two stones are a little bit in trouble and black is happy with the, the shape he's got so what was the suggestion here uh r5 and then push in the corner r4 like this instead of going back well here you can also play this move which is slightly better than r4 the problem with r4 is that uh white will push once and then honey like this so how to connect And black seems a little bit low if this happens. You probably honey again. Ah, pull back. That's a bit painful. Now we're back to the running like this. So you still don't really have a base. But when you play R4, there are a few interesting moves for white to consider. For example, uh, white can play this one and take away the base, then protect the corner. So black will have to run again. Another way for black uh, for white is to play sun sun right away. When white simply blocks the corner, uh, black has to come back either like this or bump and then jump out. If he doesn't do that, let's say he feels brave and he thinks that it's okay, the group is already resilient. He plays something here and takes Gote. Now White has a very nice move to counter-attack this tiny base on the right side. So what would be the point to start chasing these stones? Or try to kill them? Or at least make some profit while attacking? <laughs> yeah well white can make the moyo anyway because he's happy to to have the wall at q5 and the extension at k3 in place but now he can attack quite severe this bottom group and earlier the this uh s7 was the move to remove to remove the base like that and start chasing the group but actually there's a slightly better move Mm, R7 probably doesn't work so well. Yeah, S6, very good. So when you play S6 and then this move, what R3 was setting up, it's a ladder at S5. So when black connects here, now this capture works. Therefore, black has to play a tie like this and accept a very pitiful life on the side. Either a tie here or extend. And the problem is, black doesn't feel like playing another move because he wants to play a big point somewhere else, for example, this one. And then white will block in send. This is extremely painful to, to live with those two eyes. They look like painted two eyes. Rather die than live like that. So it's good to remember this contact. That's a nice way to to set up a sabaki on the right side. Oh, follow up question to this. Oh, sorry. Let's go back to. Ah. You mean R11, the attach? Usually you use that kind of move when the, the situation is pretty crowded. And well, it can happen also um, when the shapes, just a second. It's a white stone here and let's say 
let's say you have a, a strong black group something like this and all you want to do now it's um, damage the right side so instead of playing something like s10 or s11 or other moves you just play the attach because it's quite difficult for for white to to react many times he just plays like this and lets you take the stone probably you recognize this shape this happens quite often in the late stage of uh, end game so you can think about r12 if you're not confident that r13 will work because the other variation it's uh, when you play r12 <laughs> well, the thing is when you when you play r12 and white plays something like q12 and you play the honey under sometimes white wants to resist so instead of playing r12 and playing somewhere else i don't know he can try to resist with s12 and now you just go out and then on this atari you just break the the side because next you have a double atari. So this is the kind of situation where you can play that tsuke more often. Probably uh, this way it's it's more intuitive than in the example I showed earlier because you oops you already have the the strong position. Ouch. But yeah, when, when you think that you just have uh, an issue with a group running like this, then you have to come up with uh, with some moves that are breaking more of the the opponent's territory. So that's the the time when you find these kind of contact moves. Probably in uh, long time thinking games in tournaments you can consider such moves. If you play Blitz on KGS or on any other server, Taijam, Fox, I don't know, you will just think about R5 or simply run out. But now you have a new idea to consider this contact and then try to, to connect under and make life. Anyway, let's check a, a few more examples. Ah, this is a very common one. When you have a stone at um, F17, the idea of, with this kind of invasion is actually to live in the corner. So what you don't really want to do in this position, th this is the, the target. So you, you jump at F17 to prepare the C17. If you play a move like jumping out, yeah, that's a, that's a classic though. White will peep once and then jump. So all you get is a heavy group. These three stones. They have to run and it's not pleasant. So in this case, it's better to go into the corner and just take the life. So if this happens, even if you lose uh, F17, which was the original evasion, Black is happy with uh, the compensation he, he got in the corner. What to do if White tries to kill everything? Let's say he <clears throat> he puts a stronger resistance like that. There is a little Tesuji here to go out with that stone. Let's see some options. Actually, it's pretty much one option here. Mm, that's possible too. D16, it's interesting, but a little bit questionable. Because if you play D16 against crosscut, you can't do much. It's going to be Atari, Nobi, 
And again, you got to run quite heavy. So white keeps the corner. Yeah, but after Atari, there's not much to do. <laughs> it's something like this, huh? And in this corner, if black tries to kill white, now white will find the Tesuji and capture the three stones faster. Let's see, Ducky, if you remember this Tesuji. You are around 5k level, so you should know this one. Why to kill the three stones in the corner? Any clue? How to save these two by killing the triangle? Yeah, but it's white to play and he will kill black. You like the result for now, but when those three black stones are dead, you're not going to like it. So let's say white plays this SUG. And now black tries to capture white faster. It doesn't work. So again, black is on the run. This is too good for white. Oh, oops. Back to this. <laughs> so actually, the, the Tesuji move is to play the kick. Because this way, when white tries to surround, black can play the wedge, and he can create some cutting points. In the variation when uh, black goes no be here, white will push several times. And even if black leaves in the corner, it will be something like this. White is happy with the outside influence. This is similar with uh, the positions that happen a lot these days when uh, people invade the sun sun right away in Fuseki. And that's due to AlphaGo and the other AIs. Everybody's playing the sun sun invasion early nowadays. It's a fashion. But when you play the, the attach, uh, that's a little bit of a Tesuji here. And the wedge creates more cutting points. So when white protects here, black and Atari and capture the stone on the left side. So this way, he's, he's got a bigger corner. White can go down and play this 4 move. And this one. But in the end, black took most of the corner. He connected very well with D10. So it was worth sacrificing uh, F17 and damage the Moyo. Now let's say uh, what to do when white tries the honey in the corner. How to resist. No B or something else. Counter Hane. Let's check this variation, how black will set up a Sabaki. At that it's quite natural here, cut and fight. So in this position, how can uh, black uh, survive in the corner? There are actually several moves to consider. <clears throat> C15 Atari directly. He can play this one and then sacrifice. And this is actually considered pretty good for black because he separates the stone. But there's uh, another way. You can think about, uh, yeah, D18. And Atari again. And then Atari here. And probably another Atari F16, but this you can keep as a threat. The thing is, when Hana in the corner, this will end up in a call. Because uh, white can go down, and then you need to throw in an Atari. So this will be a call fight. But if you have enough call threats uh, at that stage in the game, you can uh, you can fight this call. But if you don't want to fight the call, then you just sacrifice a few stones and easily the C14. So it's good enough. And if you don't want to fight the call, there's a little problem. So you can play Atari here anytime. It's not so important. But if you go down and you try to win the semi from this side as black, white has a nice Tesuji. He can 
uh, cut ones. And now it's impossible to approach at C19. So Black needs to add a move here, and then he needs one more approach move, but uh, White will take. So then when uh, Black takes, he loses a corner. It's not too bad, because Black survived in the top, and you can say that Sabaki was quite successful. But now White is also happy to have a larger corner than expected. And let's see if White has other options here. Oh yeah, Hane from this side. This is more natural than Hane in the corner. Also against Hane in the corner, Black can simply Nobi, and then block, and Nobi again. But in this position, double Hane, it's a problem. So... Quite painful to take this small life in the corner and give a lot on the outside. So it's better to, to resist with a counter Hane. Well, uh, probably another option is to play Atari here. Then two more Ataris like this. And then sacrifice the two stones in the corner. But in this case, mm, White still has this move, which is related to a ladder. Because when uh, Black goes down, if the ladder is good, White can cut. And if the ladder is not good, White can play like this and still attack the whole thing. That's why probably in this case, F, ah, F15, you mean instead of F16? Well, if this happens, then White has a peep here, a clamp, a jump, and again, Black's position is extremely heavy. So this is not really a Sabaki. <laughs> Too ugly, yeah. It's an anti-Sabaki sequence. So simply, simply playing Atari and then Atari, it's a solid way for Black because he loses less stones. Like playing Atari, this is, this is a good exchange compared to giving another stone and then you have to worry about all those cuts. So there was another way for white to resist. Let's go back here. Ah oh, yeah, the honey from the outside. How to react to this? Go down or honey or cut. Well, D16 was the, the key point, and when White plays, uh, Black can uh, easily leave in the corner. Now, with this honey, White is trying to put more pressure, but in fact, it still doesn't work. Because there's too much Aji in that area, so Black can use the cuts and leave. And this is again a pretty successful Sabaki for Black. Now in this position, I think this happens a lot in uh, handicap games, when actually J16 it's at K16, so White tries this kind of uh, G16 invasion to, to be a little more fancy. And then if he simply runs out, it's not so great. Ooh. K16 for White doesn't look so great like in, in the position when you play the Tsuki on the third line. But what you have to do with this G16, it's actually to, to try to attach in the corner and set up a base around E17, F17. So you can jump out like this and you're still on the run and when Black takes uh, E17, he closes the corner, he's threatening to connect under a G17 and White is simply floating. So the, the first move to consider is this attach. And now the, the most natural variation and the basic one, more or less, in, in handicap six to nine games, it's something like this. Black keeps the corner with a the block, then white plays a double Hane. <coughs> and what's the move next to, to try to make some eye shape? 
for white locally around uh almost good c18 is possible but you can just play e18 here and think about c18 next yeah because if he tries to take away your base at h17 then you immediately play c18 so black will simply go down playing atari d18 is not so good because after playing atari you still need to go back and connect to c18 so playing this atari it's an adjudication Black doesn't want to ruin that. Uh, well, it's an education because he's losing the peep at uh, F17. So Black simply eliminates the weakness with that Atari. So he will simply go down. I know the reflex for Q players and probably double digit Q players is to always play Atari and hope that your opponent will uh, miss it and then you capture some stones. But in the end, it's better to keep the weakness for later in the game. They always think, I think double digit Q players, they always think they have uh, two moves in a row when they read moves ahead. They say, I play here, my opponent does and boom, I capture him. At least that's what I used to think when I was 17 Q. And probably I'm not alone in this. <laughs> so, yeah, attaching under like this and going down, it's enough to fix a base. And in fact, it's pretty good because these stones here, they become a little bit over concentrated like that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta hold your Ataris as much as you can. So if Black cuts and tries to fight a little more, let's see a few more variations here. Now we go back to that corner capture like before. So White has all these force removes. He can even push once again. And then when he drops down here, the two stones are captured in the corner. This is a, a good lesson for Ducky in corner semi. When uh, Black plays this move, White comes with the Tsuji, and it's finished. And if you try this one, Honey will work. And again, Black is down to two liberties. And if you want to be a little more um, sneaky and you play the throw in and try to set up a call, White will simply no be in the corner. And on the turn, Atari comes. So it's not this kind of call. But even if this call happens, it's difficult for for Black. But in the corner, uh, white will kill unconditionally. So you gotta be aware. Now, if black tries to resist this way, then white simply turns, black connects against double Atari, and next move, it's a great Sabaki. Just capture the two stones, and he lives pretty big in that area. This happens sometimes when you give six to nine handicap to some five Q. I think they will fall into this kind of traps a lot. That's actually the way uh, for <laughs> Aurelie. That that's the way for white to win games uh, in handicap. Trying this to get uh, D seventeen and then if Black really wants to keep safe, he will play something here and then go down. But still, it's better to go D16 and build a bigger corner. Are there any other ways for uh, Black to try to resist? Other than this and this? Ah, when this one, eh? Sometimes you play that move, actually. Uh, C16, so you can come around from the left side. But in this case, I think you're just giving a lot of territory. If you're Atari here, there is not much follow-up uh, against D15. Of course, you have this Atari if you really need ice, and then you run out, like this or like this. But it just gives more territory to black in this particular case. 
If you can use the edge of that C16, then it's okay to play the double honey. Well, when you lose C18, you, you give a few more points there. Because when you play here and he plays, let, let's say you have the same, I mean, he goes here. His corner is smaller now. It's not like uh, he has a stone here, this, this, and now instead of playing Atari from the outside, you decide to, to give him one stone. This is clearly bigger for black now. And when you play inside, he just answer. This is the shape, right? So you would never put yourself in Atari. You would just go Atari from the outside. And then this and this. But uh, there are positions where you got to play the double honey. <laughs> I see. <laughs> For the three down body. So he knows next time. Sounds good. So let's see. I think there are a couple of more examples. Oh, this is also a classic one. It happens a lot when uh, black invades on the fourth line and white is trying to, to put him into a very heavy shape. So the tendency is to go out directly with this move. And then when uh, white honey, you're thinking, oh, I have to go out and the only way it's empty triangle. Because if you attach, you get cut and you suffer. So it's quite painful. It's a way to go out, but it's not sabaki. So in order to, to set up a pretty resilient shape, you got to try a different way. Ah, and this one, this is also terrible. Playing Kosumi, white will push, and then he will connect under. And again, you make the empty triangle, but this time here, and that's a shape to avoid. So let's find the Tsuji. Oops. Instead of going out like a chicken, Try something more brave. Ah, uh, almost. It's a contact, but I think L16 is the second move in the sequence, so you're pretty close. <laughs> anyway, if you want to try that suke, it has to be mostly on the third line, against third line stones. But if you play K17, the natural way for white is to block. And now the Tesuji is your L16. So you suggested the right move but it was the second in the sequence for black. And now white can try to no B or go up or Atari. And either way, black will, uh, will escape. So this cross cut is setting up a pretty nice squeeze play. When uh, no B here at M17, what to do next? That's one of my favorite techniques. The driving to Stuji or Shibori technique. Yeah, that's easy, huh? So you play all these forcing moves and then you connect. So all of a sudden, black has a strong position and D16 became a little bit thin. It's good to remember this sequence. And if white just extends this way, now you can use the edge of uh, L16 and break the top side, hurt the other stone somehow. Which move next? K18 or M18? What to do? Pretty much one option here. Ah, uh, close. The other move is forcing more. I think if you K18 and white turns, there's not much to do. When you connect here, white will connect here. When you try to save the top stones, you will lose the middle ones, or maybe the top two. And those three can uh, die in a net. It's pretty heavy. So you've got to block the other way. And like this, the, the two white stones, are uh, they, they lose liberties. They only have two. So now he's trying hard to, to escape, and he will turn once. If I just place here, here, Atari, and this, and this, Black is happy. Now, 017, it's in trouble. Black damaged the top. There is still AG uh, around G16, so this is too painful for White. So White will try to go out, and now take uh, two stones, 
this is fine. He he captures the two stones. But again, black can play some forcey moves. Black could also play here once the turn, but he can do that anytime. Anyway, hunting the head of two stones, it's a basic technique. And then push several times. And now the driving to Suji again, and he's out. So this is still better than playing the empty triangle and escape. And now, Black is actually not running alone. This group is weak, and the two stones are weak. That's a four sequence. So let's see what other way. Ah, this one. This is terrible. Ah, yeah, White can try this Atari. So actually, for, for White to play Nobi here and try to resist in the fight, it's, it's a collapse. He can lose the game right here. Trying Atari here, it's possible. But again, it's not going to be great. Because in a couple of moves, uh, Black will simply leave. And now, if you surround this kind of group, it's already alive. So the vital point is to play here and try to take away the base. But Black has a very nice move to refute that. Kosumi. And then, which is the move to jump out and uh, save the group? Because luckily, uh, Black has only one eye. I think this is more a question for 5 or 6Q. Or probably even 10Q level. Usually, uh, there are two jumps you can consider here. But one of them is better in this case. Probably both of them will work, but you gotta know which one to use in uh, each particular case. H14. That's correct. Because if white pushes here, double Atari will happen. So you can be cut. But if you play here, let's see how is the situation now. Can Black escape somehow? It's not a double attack anymore, but Black still has an option. Well, this move is center. Let's say he played this exchange before. And now he needs to set up a, a trap to kill some stones in the middle. And luckily, in this case, black has a ladder. How to set that up? That's a good question, question for Alex. He should know. Kill, kill. Or just survive. You got you to gotta kill something to, to escape. Three stones or two stones. This is a three move sequence. L15. If L15, white goes out and the ladder is broken. So you need to play M16. And when white plays here, you capture two stones in the top. And if white defends in the top this way, or this way, then you play Atari. And it's a ladder. The ladder comes this direction. And it works. We don't have to play this out, I guess. So now I think we're down to the last example. Or no? Oh, wait. This was the last one. Uh, we talked about this before, but I forgot to show you one sequence here. So, um, when white play this attach, there is a counter clamp here. I mean, a, a clamp to switch like this. And when uh, black goes down, no B, this, and this. 
Oh, I think I'm missing something from the file. Hang on a second. I jumped too quickly here through the variations. There was an example uh, when you invade the Chinese Fuseki. Oh. But anyway, I can set that up. Ah, we missed this one. I'm sorry, I have to get back to this. Yeah, I was jumping a little bit ahead here. Yeah, so there was this variation where black already has uh, 017 in place. So if, if this happens, this is terrible for white, going out with a heavy group like that. It, it's like a worm trying to escape somehow. And just playing J17, it's not so creative. Because black will uh, consume here, and now white has to take care of J17, probably a pincer. But still, the corner is going away. So now we, we need to, to play again the move, like that R11, I think it was, and try this attach. So what are the ways for black to, to react? Honey, up, down, no B, up, down. Let's see. If just no B, then this will happen. And in this case, white doesn't have to play J18 because this will end up a little bit over concentrated. Uh, oops, that's a misclick like this. So black will just connect solid and then piece. And this is a fine result for white in the top because he is giving this stone, but black invested lots of uh, stones to, to surround it. But he, he gets a pretty nice base in the top and pincers uh, 017 in the process. Now, if black goes down, white can honey on top, then block to, to threaten the cut. And it's a similar result to the sequence before. Then on honey under, uh, white can honey on top like before. And now there's a nice Tsuji here, using those cutting points. Where would you go? Cut G18 or J18? I think even dumb players have a problem with uh, this kind of uh, cut. I mean, this kind of RG to exploit the cuts. Yeah, that's always the case. J18, very good. Because um, what, what happens, people go like this, Atari, Atari, and set up the ladder. So they are happy that it worked and the ladder is working. But in fact, you can play J18 because if uh, black captures, you have double Atari and you take the two stones, then you destroy the corner. And when uh, black plays here, the ladder still works, and now black has to go back and play another move. Otherwise, he will lose those four stones. It's not like uh, black plays this move, and now you play inside and give him the stone. Now you would play Atari here, and then set up a ladder, and now black has to add another move. <laughs> you remember the Tevari in that corner? Oh, if the ladder doesn't work, it's still okay, because uh, you can extend here. And now black again has to take the stone like this or like this, and you just play on it. So either way, it's good to cut J18 because black owes another move in the top left corner. So there were other ways for uh, black to react, like Han on top. And here, for example, if uh, white simply extends, black connects, white extends. I think he can do better than this. So he can honey under, try to get a little extra, and then Atari on top, and now set up the ladder. And let's suppose the ladder works, just for the sake of this example. 
Otherwise, white will not play the harness sacrifice if the leather doesn't work. <clears throat> so this is this variation is clearly related to a leather. And that's just a bug. You give a stone and you take a stone and that shape is good. And there was another position I tried to... Oh yeah, this one. I completely... Yeah. Skip this one. Oh, thank you very much. So in this position, most of the time black will play k here. This is a Chinese, low Chinese opening. And then white plays something like this. Then black either jumps out here or jumps like this. And white can attach again to secure the base. Or white, uh, or when black jumps here, white goes out. Then against this peep, white resists. I think these are like uh, classic Josekis when uh, when you play Chinese opening and white enters Q5. And what happens sometimes, black tries to be... Uh, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a common variation. But sometimes black wants to be more aggressive, so he plays R, uh, R4. And against this move, many people play R5 by reflex thinking, okay, they have to separate the right side. But it's actually not so great, because if you look on the right side, the extension is already taken. So when white extends here, black will jump, and this group is heavy. It's over-concentrated or Kori Katachi. That's not great. So in this position, white has to find a way to, to make a Sabaki. I remember I was maybe like 2Q when I seen this kind of situation long time ago, I think back in, I don't know, 97 or 96. And it looked quite interesting, and I try it very often. Yeah, it's P4, P3. And P4 is the, the gentle way. You play the Kosumi, you jump out, and here you got to play a move, which uh, gives you a... All right. I think Vital Points was written by Takagawa Kaku or something like that. I don't remember. Or maybe that's the guy who wrote uh, All About Thickness. So this is the kind of jump you play because, uh, and the leather should work, of course. When uh, black cuts here, you set up the leather that goes in the top left corner. And that's actually a nice shape to, to jump to N7. So this is a very nice sabaki for white. Because if you simply play a one space jump, in many positions, one space jump is, is just good. O4 as uh, white. Like this. Well, this came up can be cut. The proverb says that you can cut Kema at the waist, like this, pak, pak, cut. So that's why if you just Kosumi, and with Kosumi you want to put more pressure, because next you can surround P3. So if Black doesn't care, he plays here, you block. And now he has to do something. So it's easy to fix a base. So playing P4, when you play the Kosumi, you're connected for sure. When you play Kema, and try to be too light, you can get disconnected. But back to this a little bit. When playing just one space jump, um, black can push here once, then play a peep like this, and another peep, and all of a sudden, this group is heavy. And you have some empty triangles here, and actually another one here. Too many empty triangles. <laughs> well, you don't really need to resign. It's the beginning of the game. You can still hope, but the, the shape is painful. So it's good to remember the two-space jump. And I also remember a position. I don't think it's set up here. OK, just a second. Yeah. 
let's say we have uh, the Chinese opening again. And now white approach is like this. Now probably you've seen this many times in the past, like, I don't know, in, in the early 2000s, it was quite popular. Nowadays, everybody approaches Chinese opening this way. And then Sun Sun invasion. Or recently I've seen even direct Sun Sun invasion because that's the fashion. But against N4, B6, uh, usually, usually black answers Q5, but sometimes he, he wants to uh, play a little more aggressive, so he goes with a pincer at K4. And in this case, if you play Q5, then you, you get a little bit in trouble uh, when black starts to, to cut here, so it's a little bit risky. And what I remember in, in some of Lee Chunko games a long time ago, Instead of playing Q5, he would go P, P5, then uh, black takes a Shibari, white plays a pincer, so K4, it's also without a base, so he needs to jump out. Then he would go two-space jump here, and now the idea with this two-space jump, it's either cap at K8 or attach R6 and uh, set up the, the Sabaki. So this would be Miai. Yeah, yeah, you have that attach and the uh, the cross cut. Yeah, that's a uh, that's actually played a lot nowadays. Yeah, this kind of thing. Th this can be pretty messy too. Anyway, probably next time we gotta have a lecture on uh, Chinese fuseki and all kind of uh, crazy ways to uh, destroy the moyo. But I just wanted to show you something related to Sabaki here. So when you play the Kema and Pincer, then two space jump. So you have the option to play uh, R6 and cross cut, like in the first example, more or less. And then in this case, it's fine to play here. Or you can just leave it again put pressure or whatever, you're fine already. But I think black will probably take. And he can even resist and fight the call. Well, it depends. But playing here, he gets another 4C move at P3. So this group is uh, quite resilient. Damage is done. Black cannot set up a, a very nice moyo. So most of the time what happens here, uh, black will play this move. And in this case, white will just Kosumi, block, and then cap. So again, we can say this was a pretty successful Sabaki, this kind of shape. These are the, the two Sabaki formations I, I remember from replaying pro games back in uh, the early 2000s. They, they used to play this kind of formation a lot. That, that Kusumi at P4 and jump was probably played a lot uh, earlier, like, I don't know, in the 90s when Kato Masao and Chochi Kun were playing Chinese Fuseki a lot. Yeah, you always have a, a better attack when you have a, a stable position overall. So I guess that's pretty much it about Sabaki for today. And I hope you you learn a few a few tricks, and you can implement that in uh, in your game and play more skillful. Thank you very much, also, and good luck in your next games. Hope you can make some successful sabakis from now on. <laughs> All the best, and yeah. Yeah, I will be in Hamburg at Kido Cup next week on Friday evening. So Saturday we'll join the tournament. Yeah, we will meet. All right. Have a good night and thanks for watching and enjoy. Bye bye.